You know, sometimes you have to take an aptitude test or different types of tests at your work. And they're asking you very similar questions in different scenarios. And they're telling us, don't sweat it, but try to honestly answer the questions. And I'm going, I thought I answered this five times ago. A lot of these tests are meant to sort of figure out who you really are. There's many sides of all of us. A lot of us talk differently to different people. You talk differently to a kid as you would to an adult. And sometimes to different friends, of course. But the bottom line is we're complicated creatures and your work, your bosses want to know what you act like at home because they think eventually you'll be acting like that at work. I mention all this because after my new interview with John Lodge, and by the way, we'll include older clips when I talked to John a few years ago as well. The song Gemini Dream came up. It was a number one song in Canada. And I've heard him talk about this a few times. He talked about it twice with me, about the fact that Gemini Dream is about we're more than just this one thing. The hit is about being on stage and being that version of John Lodge. And when he's off the stage, as you'll hear in this clip, he's painting the shed. It's not necessarily a complicated song as it, as it is a complicated subject. Released May 19th, 1981. It was the first of a few comeback songs for the Moody Blues. John Lodge on Rocky Street Music. The Moody Blues were a British rock band formed in Birmingham, England in 1964, having enjoyed a diverse and influential career spanning several decades. Their music certainly has evolved through the years, with different eras that mark distinctive lineups and musical styles. The band's history can be broadly divided into three eras. The early years with Denny Lane, the classic era with Justin Hayward and John Lodge, and their comeback in the 1980s. The early years, 1964 to 1966. The Moody Blues were originally formed by Denny Lane on vocals and guitar, who would later after this short stint be a longtime bandmate with Paul McCartney and Wings. Mike Pender, keyboards and vocals, Ray Thomas on flute and vocals, Graham Edge on drums, and Clint Warwick on bass. Their early sound was rooted in R&B, and they gained initial fame with their hit Go Now in 1964. The tune topped the UK charts and reached number 10 in the US. This period was marked with their energetic live performance and a series of R&B singles, but the band's first album, The Magnificent Moody's in 1965, failed to make a major impact. So Denny Lane left in 1966. The classic era, 1966 to 1978. The departure of Lane and Warwick led to the recruitment of Justin Hayward on vocals and guitar and John Lodge on bass and vocals, setting the stage for a new Moody Blues, their most successful and influential period. With the new lineup solidified, the band moved towards a more symphonic rock sound, incorporating orchestral elements and complex arrangements. Their landmark album, Days of Future Past, in 1967, featured the London Festival Orchestra. It fused rock and classical music in a very innovative way. The album included Nights in White Satin and Tuesday Afternoon, which became timeless classics. And this success established the Moody Blues as a pioneer in progressive rock. In fact, Days of Future Past has been given the distinction by many as the first prog album of all time. Throughout the late 60s and 70s, the band released a string of successful albeit on a threshold of a dream in 69, to our children's children's children, also in 69, Question of Balance the following year, Every Good Boy Deserves Favor in 71, Seven Sojourn in 72, and the hits of the period included Questions, The Story in Your Eyes, and Isn't Life Strange? The Blue Jays Project in 1975. During a hiatus in the mid-70s, Justin Hayward and John Lodge released an album as a duo called Blue Jays in 75. The album was very well received, producing a notable track called Blue Guitar. And it was another example of that great chemistry between the pair. Patrick Moraz joined the Moody Blues in 1978, replacing keyboardist Mike Pinder. Moraz had previously been a member of the band Yes, joining in 1974 for the Relayer album, which by the way was his only full album with the band. Moraz's tenure with Yes from 74 to 76 and a guest appearance in 2018. Synthesizer work significantly influenced the band's music during his tenure, adding a fresh progressive rock element. He remained with the band until 1991 the 1980s comeback and beyond that started in 1981. The Moody Blues reunited in 1978 and their 1981 album, Long Distance Voyager, marked a successful return to the music scene, featuring hits like The Voice and Gemini Dream. The band continued to release albums throughout the 1980s, including The Present in 83 and The Other Side of Life in 86. 
featuring hits like Your Wildest Dreams. In the 1990s and 2000s, the Moody Blues maintained a loyal fan base, touring extensively and releasing albums like Keys of the Kingdom in 1991 and Strange Times in 1999. Did you think with the Moody's everyone contributed so much, especially you and Justin? Did you and Justin ever have a Lennon McCartney thing where where someone was, if someone contributes at that level, it makes you work a little harder. Was that even conscious for you? Uh, I think we, Justin and I we used to sit in uh, his studio or my studio, and we'd go back for uh, forms and ideas, like Gemini Dream. Yeah. Uh, I think the original title was Touring the USA because we wanted a song that put us back on the road because really we hadn't been on the road for six years. And uh, I remember thinking, oh, long time no see, you know. And uh, when, when we created the song, it developed and developed and we realized what when we were on stage, we were a different person to when we were at home. And when we were on stage, we were living that Gemini dream, being a musician. Who taught you how to phrase? Because I remember Gemini Dream to me and a few of your other songs. I like the way you phrase. I, I, was there something that taught you? Because there's a nice bounce to Gemini Dream. Is there anybody that you, you liked that, that you, you learned songwriting from in the early days? I, I don't really know. I just love music. It, it went into Bloody Holly was the mainstay for me yeah. because he showed me how to be a songwriter and performer and you didn't have to be a massive American icon like Elvis or Gene Vincent, you know. Uh, English people couldn't do that. We couldn't do that. Uh, we know we have been able to do that. Uh, and we found another way through Buddy Holly. Uh, that's, that's what the, the chord structure is. That really interesting chord, no 12 bars anymore, just different. Yeah. And uh, I think following that line, but I think the other, I loved all the American vocal harmony groups, started with the, the Platters, but then Temptations, Impressions, you know, Otis Redding, you know, they had something really fantastic. And I thought, if he could take that type of harmony into English guys, it might really work well. Gemini Dream, number one in Canada. You know yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me, about, uh, tell me about that song. We, we love that song. I'm, that was so huge here. Tell me about that song. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, it was um, really about, it was like, okay, that's what we're going to do now. What have we been doing? We haven't been doing anything. We've been just like uh, what everyone else does, not musicians. And so, in a way, it was this Gemini thing about, A, being on, on stage in front of thousands of people, uh, and B, being at home, you know, uh, painting the shed <laughs> or something like that. Uh, it, was, it really was about this... Gemini world we were living in. And uh, I think a lot of us have that Gemini world uh, we live in. And uh, I think that's what, you know, touched a lot of people uh, because your world you live in is, isn't just about one thing. It's about uh, in, lots of things within you to make you who you are. I finally got a chance to listen to the new record. Yeah. Oh. Really inspiring. I got to tell you, man, I, I loved it. And I just, and I felt guilty. I went, oh, I haven't listened to it till now. And how long did that take you to do? Uh, it, it, it took quite a long time because I started it originally as a live concert. So we rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. And then we decided to make the album. And it took a long time working out how to do the album uh, to really 
so he wasn't the same, but he didn't differ uh, much. It's really important for me to get get the feeling, the emotion of the album, but make it this year, 2024, you know. And uh, I think having Graham, uh, I, I went to Graham Edge first and said to Graham, just before he passed away, unfortunately, I said, Graham, would you go in the studio and record um, your poetry for me? Because I want to, you to be on stage with me, although be on a screen. Uh, he said, John, I'd love to do that. I've never recorded my own poetry. Uh, and he said, yeah, keep it Moody Blues music alive. And uh, it's it's a really great moment on stage when Graham comes on that screen. Um, we, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of emotion there. A lot of years we work together. And uh, yeah, so when I progressed into the album, I had lots of pieces already worked out from the live concert. And then I said to Alan Hewitt, who was, you know, my musical guy, musical director, Alan, how, how can we do this? Uh, and not make it the same, but keep the emotion uh, and the spirit yeah. of the album. And uh, one of the things I thought about, it was introducing more electric guitar into the album, which I did, and changing a few things, but probably people who've got an original album would perhaps notice them, but they are slightly different. And uh, it, it gave it, it its own personality, personality, I think, to the album. In the next few days, we'll be putting out other parts of this interview, which will also include our previous interview with Justin Hayward. So you'll have both John Lodge and Justin Hayward. And Justin just recently said what we all expected, which is he'll probably not tour as the Moody Blues with John Lodge again. But this way you get two separate people touring very similar songs. Well, the whole interview, the latest one with John Lodge is ready. We'll put it up. Always look for the link at the very top of the description. When it's available, it'll be there. And remember, join our Patreon, get early access to our videos. If you want to donate to the channel, there are links to PayPal. And of course, we have a lot of swag. You can buy a Rocky Stream Music t-shirt or a cap or a sweatshirt. There's a lot of things there. All the links are in the description. But subscribe to our channel, share our videos on social media. We love it when you share our videos. Comment on them and like them as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky Stream Music.